right. After you finish the machining square, you're going to move on to this next one, next next part to make called the C clamp. This is a little bit more advanced than the machining square, and it'll get you in some more tools than Bernard has. See here, we have three parts to this. We have a body here, we have a screw here, and we have a cap here. This little icon or little image here just shows you how the cap joins to the screw, so that's not very necessary right now. So we're going to make three different parts and then assemble them. To get to this um, file and to get to everywhere, really, remember you go to computer, goodies, tech ed, Cohen, engineering drawing, C clamp, and there's this file here. So we're going to start with the main part of this op this object, which is the body. So let's launch a new part. So just have a new part open, like you usually have done before. And we're going to start by creating a 2D sketch. And we're going to go to the front plane of this, since it's, this is the front of the object. Now I'm going to start off with just sketching this general shape. You notice there's these rounded corners here. I'm going to ignore those. I'm going to pretend those are rectangular. And I'm, but I will do this angle, and I'll show you how to do an angle shortly. So we're going to start at our origin in this bottom corner. Oops. And instead of clicking on the button up here, if I just press L on my keyboard, it makes it anyway. So I'm going to start drawing this object. And notice that this is on the same height. So this height is two inches from here, same as here. So when I draw this part, I'm going to want to draw up to where it lines up to that. See how that line pops up there? I'm going to go there, and then back down. And press Escape to get out of the line tool. So there's that general part. And notice when I drew that angle, I just drew the angle of it. I don't need to know the actual angle. It doesn't have it. All I need to draw an angle is where the angle starts. So it starts 0.75 up from the top, and where it stops. Stops two inches in, and I could do some math to figure out how long it goes to get to there. All I really care about is where the angle starts and stops. So now I can dimension it. Again, I could click dimension up here, or I can click D on my keyboard. And we see that this part is four inches long. So I'm going to make my bottom four inches. And then it's two inches tall. This back here is 0.75, then 2.5, and then 0.25. So now I have a bunch of dimensions, but I still have some green lines like that one. And like that one won't move, but if I click here, it will move. So I'm still missing how tall it is from here to here, which we see is 0.75, which also goes to there. They're the same thing. Oops, wrong button. And there's my general shape. Now we're missing these rounded parts to it, so I need to add those. And we can see this has a radius of 0.375. We have two different types of rounded parts here. This inside rounded thing is called a fillet. So an inside uh, cutout that's round is a fillet. And an outside round, like this one here, is called a round. So we have a round and a fillet. Inventor calls all of them fillets, though. So I'm going to just go up here and click on the fillet tool. And we need the radius. So this radius is 0.375. So I'm going to type in here 0.375. And I'm going to just hover over that corner. And you can see a little green line pops up. And I can click on it. And it adds that fillet for me, or that round for me. Then these other ones are 0.25. So here and here are 0.25. So I'm going to just change this to 0.25. And hover over there, click, and hover and click. And get all that tool, and now I have my part fully sketched out. 
Now I need to extrude it. So we can see its depth is 0.75 inches with these arrows right here. So instead of going to extrude, I'm going to just press E on my keyboard and then type in 0.75. And there is my part so far. Lastly, we see that there is a hole back here. It's called 3816 U or UNC-2. And if I go on the internet and type in thread notation, we can see what that means. So here's your standard thread notation, where our first number is our major diameter. So in this case, 3 eighths. Three eighths is the major diameter, so the outer diameter of this hole is three eighths, or its largest size is three eighths of an inch. Dash twenty is called the thread pitch. That's how many threads there are in one inch. So if I were to measure one inch of this bolt or this hole, I would measure it to have twenty individual threads on it, or little ups and downs of the uh, bolt. So in this case, I have sixteen threads. UNC is what we call the thread form. That's a standardized thread. So um, that means unified national course. And unified national course is just a standard we use to tell people what kind of thread we're using. And then we have a dash two. That's called the class of fit. A uh, class of fit is how accurate the thread is. So a two is kind of your standard thread. It should, it's a fairly accurate fit. And this doesn't have an A or a B, so we're going to ignore that part for now. Um, typically, though, A means external thread. So like this, where it's an external thread. And B would mean internal thread, like a hole, like what we're about to do. So we're going to draw a... 3 8 16 UNC hole through this back part here. To do so, we need to make a sketch on the back of our part. So I'm going to click S to start a sketch and click on the back of my part here. And I'm just going to put a point wherever I want somewhere back here. We're then going to use the dimension tool by clicking D. And we notice it is 0 0.375 inches from the top to the center of the circle, down, and 0.375 inches from the edge to the center of the circle, over. I'm going to mention to the edge. Come on. 0.375, and from the top, 0.375. And notice my lines go yellow. Remember, those are reference lines, so Inventor makes those. Those are not lines I can edit. They're just telling me where things are. They're called reference lines. So now that I have this, I want to use my regular hole tool. So to do that, I can click H on my keyboard. It'll get me into the hole tool instead of going into 3D model and clicking on hole. And I want a threaded hole here. So to do that, I have different types of holes that we'll get to later here. And then I have other types of holes down here. So a simple hole is just your regular hole through a piece of metal. Then I have something called a clearance hole, which we'll get to later on in the year. And then I have a tapped hole, and that means threaded. That means I can put a bolt into it. So I want to click tap hole, and this whole new thing will pop up. I don't want to change this. ANZI unified screw threads are standard types of threads. I do want to change the size, though, to a 3 8 Again, major diameter. Decimal equivalent of 3 eighths is 0.375, so I'm going to find 0.375 and click on it. And it'll change my designation to be 3 8 16 UNC, and that's exactly what I want. The fit of it is a dash 2. My class is the same thing, it's a dash 2, or a 2, and again, B for internal thread. So now if I look at this, though, I can see my hole is going all the way through everything. I don't want that to happen. I just want to go through this part here. We don't see a hole here. 
So to do that, I'm going to change my termination to be distance. And this part was 0.375 or 0.75 inches long. So I want to change my distance up here to 0.75 inches long. And just both of these numbers should be 0.75. This top one shows how far the actual hole goes from the bottom of the hole to the top. This other one should be 0.75 shows from the top of the hole to where the thread stops. So how far the screw can go in, go in essentially. So I have that, I just click OK. And Inventor now makes a threaded hole. So we can tell there's those little threads in it where a bolt can screw in. Oh, so pretty. Our last step on this is we want to change the material. Um, these are typically made out of steel. So I'm going to just click on generic where it's, it's up here. Scroll down, find steel. It's usually actually a uh, alloy steel so let's click on alloy steel alloy and if you want you can change the color by clicking on the other one uh, let's make mine red oh look at that it's kind of weird to have a C clamp in red but I have one all right last thing to do with this part is check the mass so your mass should be 0.939 pounds and if that's correct go ahead and save it so go to your engineering drawing folder, make a new folder for C-clamp, and save this as the actual part. So this was the body, right? Yep, body. Click save, and that part's done. Now we're going to move on to the screw, which is a little bit more difficult. It's a rounded object, so we see there's a whole bunch of circles essentially make this up. So we're going to learn a new tool to do this. We can make a new part to start this out. And just as always, start a 2D sketch, and we'll start again on the front plane. Now, we're going to use a tool called the Revolve tool. And actually, if I hover over it, we'll get a little showing of what it does. Essentially, you take you create a surface or a sketch and you revolve it around itself to make it circular. So if I take this screw and I'm going to ignore this peg coming through it, I take this screw and I cut it in half, I'm going to draw half of that and then I'm going to make it spin around itself. To show you as an example, don't sketch this out, but say I wanted to make this object circular. If I go to Revolve, it takes this object, this sketch, and spins it around that center line, and I have a little cone thing. So that's how the Revolve tool works. Oops. So let's start sketching that. I need to start with what's called an axis line, which is down the center of your part. So I'm going to just draw a line. And I'm going to do it the whole distance of the part, which is 3.875 inches. So go over and make sure it's horizontal and type in 3.875. Now I'm going to start to sketch half of this part. So it looks something like this. I come up over and up and over and up and over and back down in my beginning. So you can see that first up and over was this little part in the front, then we have our screw part, and then we have this little handle part back here. Now I need to change this bottom line to an axis line. That's where it spins around itself. So I'm going to click on the line, so it should turn bright blue, and up here I have center line, I'm going to just click on that, and now it turns into a center line that's a long dash, short dash, long dash, short dash, like I taught you when we did line types. And now I can start to, excuse me, dimension this part. I'm going to do my horizontal dimensions first. So we can see this back one is 0.582 inches. So back here is 0.582. And then this front part is 
And that kind of locks in then this line's length because of these three dimensions. I could do math essentially, and Envira's doing the math to figure out how long this line needs to be. Now I want to do the diameters of the part. So this rear part has a diameter of 0.5 inches. The screw part has a major diameter of 3 eighths of an inch for the uh, fastener, for the thread. And then the front part has a diameter of 0.24 inches. So instead of going here and typing in something, that's not going to give us a diameter. Because remember, this part is going to revolve around itself and get double the thickness. So instead, I'm going to click on Dimension Tool. I'm going to click on this green line and then click on my center line. And now, look at my dimensions. See how it goes all the way, or it doubles the distance. It's now the diameter of this. So this is the diameter of 0.75. Right. Or, nope, 0.5. I'm going to double click on it and do 0.5. Oops. This was 3 eighths of an inch. So I could just do 3 divided by 8 or 0.375. And then this front part was 0.24. So again, I click on the green line, click on my center line, and 0.24. Yep. And now everything is purple or dark blue, or whatever color you see it as, uh, which means it is fully constrained, nothing can move. And Inventor also tells this to me in the bottom right hand corner, it says fully constrained. So now that I have this, I'm going to go to the 3D Model tab and click on the Revolve tool here and make it spin around itself. Click a little checkbox, and there we go. That's that part. Now, if we notice, though, this has a thread to it. It's 3 8 16 unc 2a So we need to make that a threaded part. To do that, we go to this Modify area where we modify the part. I'm going to click the drop down under hole and click on thread, and that makes an external thread. It wants me to select the face, so where that thread's going to be, so I can select any of these, it's this one here. And then I want to go to specification and just make sure that says 3 8 16 UNC and that the class is 2A. Once I see that, I'm just going to click OK, and there's my thread. So it does it for me. Now, the last part is this handle cutting through the entire thing, which has a diameter of 0.125 inches and is 2 inches long. This one's a little bit more difficult to make than anything else we've done so far. I'm going to have to, through the middle of this part, make a sketch, draw a little circle, and extrude it both ways. So to do that, in my browser, I'm going to go to my origin and expand it. And here I have those initial planes that I could have selected. Also, I have axes that I can select too. I want to find my XZ plane, which cuts through the middle of the part. So it cuts through that middle there. And I want to click on Start 2D Sketch. And that starts a sketch in through the middle of my part. Now, that's not very useful, though, for me to draw it because I can't look through the part, though. So down here, on the very bottom kind of center area, there's slice graphics. When I click on this, it cuts everything according to my sketch plane. So it cuts the part in half, and now I can see my interior details. Now all I need to do is draw a circle for this peg that is 0.312 inches from the back of my object and extrude it. So I'm going to click on the circle tool come here and draw a circle that has a diameter of 0.125 inches. And then dimension it from here to my origin of, what was it, 0.312. But my circle's still green. And that's because if I click on the center, I can make it spin around. So I can put my circle there, or there, or there. So I want to use a horizontal constraint between there and my origin to lock it into that direction. And now my circle's uh, blue or purple, and it says fully constrained, so I'm good to go. So I'm going to extrude this now. But 
I don't want it to only go one direction. I want it to go through both sides, and I want it to be two inches long. So here where it says distance and extents, I'm going to change that to two inches. And then I can change the direction. So I can have it go one way, I can have it go another way, or I can have it go both ways, which is what I want. I can also make it go asymmetric, so it goes one way, one, direct, one distance, and the other way, the other distance. But I want it to go this way, or symmetric, two inches. Click OK. And there it is. It adds it for me in both directions, popping out of that part. The very last thing to do is we can look back here. There's two lines here, and there's this one over 16 times 45 degrees. What that means is there is a chamfer. So we learned about a fillet earlier, which is a rounded edge. A chamfer is a straight, like 45 degree cut, so that's not as sharp back there. So to do that, I'm going to look at the back of my part. And where it says fill it under my modify toolbar, I'm going to click the drop down and go down to chamfer. Now I just need to change my distance. So it was what, 1 16th of an inch. So I can just do 1 divided by 16. And I need to select my edge. So that's this back edge here. Click OK. And there it is. That's what I mean by chamfer. It's and a little angled cutout, so it's a little bit safer. All right, this part's then done. So let's just change our material to steel, and we'll go with the same steel, alloy steel. And I want to make this, well, my last one was red. Mm, let's make this violet. That'll look really weird. Oh, I can right click on part and check my mass. So you should have a mass of 0.133 pounds. Once you have that, let's save it. This is called the screw. And now that part's done. So the only part we have left now is the cap. And we're going to do this again as a revolve because it is a circular part. So I'm going to start a new part, start a sketch. Let's go in the front again. And again, with a revolve, we always start with our center line. So the whole width of this part is our biggest dimension of 0.375. So I'm going to just draw a line that is exactly horizontal and 0.375 inches long. Let's see this shape goes up, angles a little bit, goes over and goes back down. So let's draw that. So it comes up first, and it angles, comes over, and back down. Pretty simple shape. And then we have um, some dimensions to it. So this back part is 0.125 inches. Um, so I can just go under dimension. Click on that back line and type in 0.125 inches. We then have some diameters here. So we can see these two arrows here are pointing to this back diameter of 0.5. And then this front diameter is 0.687. So I just can uh, make a diameter. And I forgot, though, to make this bottom line a center line. So I'm going to click on it. And click on center line. Now it's that center line that'll make us uh, do diameters. Go to dimension. And I can't really select this line. If I select this line and go from there, it's going to give me an angle. I don't want to put in an angle here. So instead, I'm going to click on the bottom dot down here of this line and then go to my center line and point and what was it? 0.5? Point, yep, 0.5. And then what's our other one? 0.687. For this one, though, because it's a straight line, I can just go from the line to the center line and type in 0.687. Right. And there's that part. Let's click Revolve by clicking R on my keyboard. And there we go. So now we have the outside done, but we have a hole. On one side, the hole is 0.25 going through. But then on the other side, we have a larger hole that's 0.375 and has a depth of 0.125 inches. 
So this kind of hole is called a counterbore, where I have a larger hole that goes one depth and then a smaller hole that goes the rest of the way. So I'm going to look at my large side, and instead of making a sketch, I'm just going to click on the hole tool. Now I'm going to click anywhere on the surface, and if I want to center a hole on a circular surface, I then just select its outer ring, and it will then center it for me. Then we used down here a threaded hole earlier, but up here we have different kinds of holes, including a counterbore hole. I click on that and it gives me a whole bunch more dimensions. This first dimension here is the outer diameter of my bigger hole. The second dimension is the depth of my smaller hole, or sorry, of my bigger hole. Then this next dimension is how far my smaller hole is, and this bottom dimension is the diameter of my smaller hole. Now this part goes all the way through, so the first thing I want to do is change my termination to be through all, and I'll just cut through everything. So let's start with our bigger hole. We can see it has a diameter of 0.375 inches, and it has a depth of 0.125 inches. So the diameter is already 0.375, so we just got to change our depth to 0.125. And then we have a inner diameter, or a smaller diameter of 0.25, which it defaults to, so it's already there. So I can just click OK, and now we have a hole with two depths through it. So the last thing here is change our material. We'll stick with that alloy steel, and again, I'm going to color it for no real reason. And let's make it, it doesn't really matter. Oh, we already have red. Let's do olive green. This thing is going to be really ugly. All right, let's check our mass. Oops. And we have a mass, a very, very light 0 0.025 pounds. Now, the name of this part is cap, so let's save it as a cap. And that's it. There's the three parts to making this object.